45th president of the United States. 45th and 47th. 47th. Yes. yes. I love that. Mr. Donald Trump. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, Welcome to the Crypto teacher. teacher. And guys, you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. And guys, we see how the narrative is changing when it comes to crypto. We had Elizabeth Warren again playing the Hegelian dialectic perfectly. That Russia can use crypto to bypass sanctions. Then we have Perry Ann from the Chamber of Commerce saying how great crypto was to the Ukrainian. They built the infrastructure in 10 minutes and over $100 million has been donated. And that is crazy because we know there's been a lot of critical moments in the United States and they took forever to get help. And this Russia and Ukraine movie gets money within 24 hours. And we had the Biden administration to spread the propaganda with TikTok creators. But guys, like I stated, Bitcoin crypto stocks are going to take a beating over the next year, year and a half. But that 10% of stocks inside the United States and 1% of cryptos are going to rise. And remember, the crypto teacher told you because he knows when it comes to the new road order, it's all planned out. Now, I'm going to leave you with a funny video of Biden and Pelosi. But we all know the money printing started with Trump. So, guys, this is nothing but the Hegelian dialectic that Fox News plays. But it is still funny. And y'all have a wonderful day. Really, I think the two things that you hear most about uh, crypto or, or Bitcoin in particular, one, you hear the, I, I coined a word that I guess is a word, but it, it's used for nefarious purposes, whether it's money laundering or in this case, it's nefarity. It's used for nefarity. And then the other is the, the energy usage and climate change and all, and, and uh, that as well is, is the two tropes that you always hear posited by, by bears or people that are negative on it. Is she on to something, though? Is Senator Warren on to something? Is that, is, should we be concerned about the use of Bitcoin for things that we don't want to happen? Like Senator Warren stated yesterday in the Senate banking hearing, that she was surprised by the facts that she learned talking to the technologists who are providing analytic and for, uh, forensic uh, data to law enforcement. Here, here are the facts. There is zero evidence or data suggesting that cryptocurrency are being widely used to evade sanctions. Both the FBI and the White House have issued statements just in the past couple of weeks saying that cryptocurrencies are a poor tool for sanctions evasion. FinCEN from the Treasury Department has also said they're not seeing cryptocurrency used to evade sanctions at a wide scale. I think this is a non-issue and I don't think some of our members of Congress are listening to their own administration. And look, Joe, the, the most frustrating thing about this is that the story we should be focused on is how cryptocurrency has played a key, a very significant role in Ukraine being able to defend itself against Russia and deploy life-saving aid on the ground in Ukraine. People have donated over $100 million in cryptocurrency to Ukraine. Look, the team that launched the official crypto fund of Ukraine, they testified in Senate banking yesterday, and they stated that it took them 10 minutes to set up the infrastructure to create that fund. 10 minutes. And then the Ministry of Defense was able to purchase and deploy critical supplies on a 24-hour turnaround. This is amazing. This is history uh, being unfolded un in, in front of us on how crypto is changing the way we interact and we transact around the world. We've got to be able to distinguish between the facts and the fears. Right. And these knee-jerk reactions to want to regulate cryptocurrency could have significant unintended consequences that could undermine the national security of our allies. We have to talk about it because the American people think the reason for inflation is government spending more money. Simply not true. When we're having this discussion, it's important to dispel some of those who say, well, it's the government spending. No, it isn't. The government spending is doing the exact reverse, reducing the national debt. It is not inflationary. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Congressman, I, I don't know. How do you see it? 
Maria, you can't force this much money into the economy without causing inflation. It's just unbelievable. We're going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're gonna get di yuan digital wallets. They're gonna receive digital yuan. They're gonna use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're gonna take it back to their home countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers, and that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Face the village. Part 2. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Face New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Goes to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.